I believe the Constitution protects the right to privacy. And I have no reason or agenda to prejudge the issue or to predispose to rule one way or the other on the issue of abortion. Roe versus Wade is a, an important precedent of the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has reaffirmed the decision, sometimes on the merits, sometimes in Casey, based on stare decisis. And I think that when a decision is challenged and it is reaffirmed, that strengthens its value. It is a precedent of the United States Supreme Court. It was reaffirmed in Casey in 1992 and in several other cases. So a good judge will consider it as precedent of the United States Supreme Court, worthy as treatment of precedent like any other. This is an important precedent of the Supreme Court that's been reaffirmed many times, but then plan, and this is the point I want to make that I think is important, Planned Parenthood versus Casey reaffirmed Roe and did so by considering the stare decisis factors. So Casey now becomes a precedent on precedent. People use super precedent differently. Okay. The way that it's used in the scholarship and the way that I was using it in the article that you're reading from was to define cases that are so well settled that no political actors and no people seriously push for their overruling. And I'm answering a lot of questions about Roe, which I think indicates that Roe doesn't fall in that category. And scholars across the spectrum say that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. But descriptively, it does mean that it's a case, not a case that everyone has accepted and doesn't call for its overruling.